Hello and welcome everyone. I am Ayaz Afar and today's tutorial we are going to dive into the world of Angular 17 focusing specifically on how to unsubscribe from observables. Whether you are new to Angular or a seasoned pro looking to update your knowledge this tutorial is just for you. Now let's talk about observables in Angular. They are a fundamental part of Angular applications allowing us to handle asynchronous data streams like user input, HTTP request and more. But there is a catch. Failing to unsubscribe from these observables can lead to memory leaks and other performance issues. That's why understanding how to properly unsubscribe is crucial for any Angular developer. In this tutorial, we are focusing on Angular 17. With each version, Angular evolves and it's important to keep up with these changes. So buckle up and let's get started on this journey to mastering observables in Angular 17. As we embark on our journey with observables in Angular 17, let's first build a strong foundation by understanding what observables are and their role in Angular applications. Observables are at at the heart of Angular's reactive programming paradigm. They are objects imported from RxJS library and are used to work with asynchronous data streams. Think of an observable as a river of data that flows over time. These data streams can include anything from user inputs, HTTP responses to even regular interval of time. Let me quickly show you a code snippet for that. Here I will import observable from our rxjs and here you can create a property my observable is equal to so new observable and we will pass a callback function here within that and we will receive a subscriber from the parameter and we will use this next function so here we are basically emitting the values and here we are completing the observable stream. So in this code snippet here, we have created a basic observable that emits hello and world before completing. So this is simple example, but in the real world applications, observables are used for handling more complex, complex asynchronous tasks. Now let's talk about unsubscribing from observables. When an observable is created, it doesn't do anything by itself. It needs a subscriber to start emitting values. Once subscribed, it's crucial to unsubscribe when the values are no longer needed or when the component using the observable is destroyed. Unsubscribing is like telling the observable, hey, I am done with your data, you can stop now. This is essential to prevent memory leaks and ensure that your application runs efficiently. If you don't unsubscribe, the observable keeps holding on to resources which can lead to various performance issues later. So let's say we have a constructor here and here you are subscribing to it. So here we are subscribing to that observable and later in the code when you want to unsubscribe you will simply use that subscription to unsubscribe by calling the unsubscribe function on it so in this snippet we subscribe to my observable uh, that we created earlier and log its value in the console when we are done we call the unsubscribe function on the subscription it's a simple but powerful concept that we will explore in more depth as we move forward all right, now that we have a basic understanding of observables and the importance of unsubscribing, let's set up our Angular environment. Let's start working with them in more depth. Now that we are familiar with observables and their importance, let's roll up our sleeves and start setting up our Angular environment from scratch. So I will guide you how to do it from scratch. So this is this step is crucial for following along with the practical examples we will be diving into the later. So first things first, we need to set up a basic Angular 17 project. If you are completely new to Angular, don't worry, I will guide you through the each step. So first of all, you need to open your terminal and you need to run the command npm install dash g angular slash cli. This command installs the Angular CLI globally on your system, which is command line interface for Angular. The CLI is a fantastic tool that allows us to create projects, generate applications and library code. 
and perform a variety of ongoing development tasks. After that is installed, you need to create a new Angular project in your machine. For that, run the command ng new and your project name. So here we are creating a new Angular project name with the name project name. So the CLI will prompt you for some options regarding the initial step. For our purpose, use the default settings that will work just fine. So I already have generated my project that is already working as you saw in my VS code. So I will be using that one. With our Angular project setup, let's talk about the tools and dependencies we will need. So ensure that you have Node.js installed as it is required for Angular development. You can download it from Node.js official website. Also make sure that RxJS is available and installed. So by default in uh, nowadays Angular is already available. So you can also check it from the package.json. So this is the default thing that came with it. You can also check by running the command npm list RxJS. So this command checks if RxJS is installed and its current version. So if for some reason RxJS is not installed, you can install it by using simple command npm install RxJS. Okay. And there we have it. Our Angular 17 environment is set up complete with all the necessary tools and dependencies. In the next section, we will start diving into the some real world scenarios for managing observables. So stay tuned as we are about to get hands on with observables and learn how to effectively manage them in Angular applications. Great. Now that our Angular environment is ready, let's jump into some practical examples. We will start with a basic example and then move on to more complex real world scenarios. Along the way, I will also point out some common pitfalls and how to avoid them. So let's begin with simple observable subscription and unsubscription. Imagine we have an observable that emits values over time like user input or a timer. So let me close everything here and I will delete everything for now from the app component and here I will define a subscription private subscription property is equal to so I will give it a type subscription okay I will make it optional to get rid of this error now I will define my constructor here in that constructor I will be creating an observable that emits a value every second so for that let's define a constant source is equal to interval okay so this interval will give you an observable that you will use to subscribe so i will use this dot subscription is equal to source dot subscribe and within that function i will pass my callback function that will receive the value and i will be displaying that value in the log console log okay now i will implement the ng on destroy lifecycle method so for that import the on destroy class from the angular core and now let's define that method ng on destroy and here i will simply uh, unsubscribe to my subscription so this will unsubscribe when the component is destroyed you can also display a console log that you have unsubscribed so let me quickly recap here in in this example we have a component that subscribes to an observable created using interval this observable emits a value every second it is essential to unsubscribe from the observable to prevent memory leaks especially in the components that get destroyed as the part of apps life cycle we do this in ngm destroy life cycle hook now let's take a look at a scenario that's more common in real world application imagine we have a service that fetches the data from an api and components that subscribe to this data so let's quickly generate a data service for the to demonstrate that example so i will run the command ngen service data okay so this will create a service for us i will go into that service and here i will inject the http client HTTP client service okay and now I will define a function fetch data observable that will give uh, return us an observable and now I will return this dot HTTP dot get 
and here you will pass the endpoint of your server api.example.com slash data so this can be any url that you will have for your project now let's go back to our component so it can be this component or any other component so i will just use this one for now and i will keep and use destroy for now okay now i will inject my data service okay uh, to inject it i will use the inject function and pass it the data service now in i will define a constructor and within that constructor i will subscribe to to the fetch data function so this dot subscription is equal to this dot data service dot fetch data dot subscribe okay and i will then pass it a callback function like always and within that callback function i will receive the data and as i also want to handle the error so i will pass in an object instead and for that i will use the next property where i will give it the function also i will have the error function okay in the next function i will console the data in the logs and in the error area i will simply display the error message okay now in the ngm destroy you can again do the same thing that we did earlier and display the log so in this component we are subscribing to the observable that is returned by the fetch data it is crucial to unsubscribe in the ngm destroy method to prevent any memory leaks especially when dealing with http methods one common mistake is forgetting to unsubscribe leading to memory leaks so always ensure to unsubscribe in ng on destroy method for use uh, in the ng on destroy method or use strategies like the take until operator to automate the unsubscription process another pitfall is creating subscriptions within nested loops or multiple times within a component this can lead to multiple subscription to the same observable which is inefficient and can cause unexpected behavior always manage your subscriptions carefully with these practical examples in mind let's move on to the some detailed code snippets that we will further illustrate how to handle observable effectively in angular having seen practical use cases let's delve deeper with some detailed code snippets i will walk you through each line of code and explaining its purpose and how it co contributes to effective observable management in angular let's start with a component that subscribes to an observable this will help us understand how to set up subscription and why it is crucial to unsubscribe so i will use the same component again so first of all <clears throat> i will create two properties private example observable is equal to actually it, i will just give it a type observable and it will have a number in it and i will make it optional to get rid of this error again i will have private example subscription okay now i will define a constructor and in that constructor i will be creating an observable that emits a number every second so for that use this start example observable is equal to new observable and i will pass it a callback function and i will be receiving the subscriber from that callback function and now within that i will define a variable count is equal to zero and then const interval id is equal to set interval and i will pass it a callback function to set interval function then i will use this line of code subscribe dot next and i will pass it the counter plus plus that will incre increment the value of the counter and after one second it will do that again okay now at the end i will return a callback function that will clear that interval okay so this will tear down logic when the observable is unsubscribed so yeah we have to fix the name okay we also need to implement the ng on destroy function to get rid of this error message uh, now we will subscribe to this observable in the constructor so i will use this dot example subscription is equal to this dot example observable dot subscribe 
and I will pass it a callback value a callback function that will receive a value and I will simply display that value in the log here you can add more descriptive descriptive text like received value this one okay now on go simply go to the ngm destroy and here i will unsubscribe from the observable when the component is destroyed for that i will simply call the unsubscribe function on my subscription okay so in this code we create an observable that emits a number every second the set interval function <coughs> is used to emit these values notice the tear down logic inside the observable that we have added here it is crucial to clear this interval to avoid memory leaks the subscription is stored in the example subscription property in the ng on destroy life cycle hook we unsubscribe from the observable ensuring that we clean up and prevent memory leaks so let's quickly test it so this app component will never be destroyed so we will not notice it so in order to experience it correctly i will create generate a new component so for that let me create a component ng generate component example press enter okay i will move all of this logic in that component okay we don't need the own destroy here okay now let's go to the example component and paste it here actually in the ts file and now we need to implement the on destroy function class here and make sure to import all missing classes okay now we need to declare or import it this example component into our app component as as i'm using standalone component so i will simply import my example component in the import array of the same app component now i can add the example component in my app.component.html and you will see that the data is here and also let me display the and now here i will display a button so whenever we click on this button it will destroy or hide the example component that will remove it from the dom so that will make it destroy and it will trigger the ng destroy lifecycle method so for that i will add click event here and i will call a function destroy and let's define it here and i will also define a property a example component visible is equal to by default it is true okay if you call the destroy function it will set this value to false so let's wrap this example component in the if condition okay and here i will place my tag for the component and here i will add my condition i am checking that if example component is visible then show this component otherwise not so right now it is visible okay so open the inspect element open the console you can see that uh, we are getting the console because the timer is still running we have started a set interval that is running after every second and after every second we are getting signal a stream in this subscribe function we are displaying that in console but as soon as we unsubscribe destroy it we will unsubscribe to this uh, subscription and we should also display the log here okay now let's see if that happens so i am going to click on the destroy example and you can see that the interval has been stopped because uh, we have added our tear down logic that will clear the interval and on destroy it will console the log that appeared here now let's quickly talk about some best practices so let's highlight these best practices for managing observables and ensuring efficient memory management <clears throat> number one unsubscribe ng on destroy so make sure always unsubscribe from the observables in the ng on destroy lifecycle hook to prevent memory leak like we did here okay also you should use the operators from the rxjs like take until 
I will give you quick example how to use take until because that is very useful as well. So let's dive into a hands on example to illustrate how take until operator is used in Angular for managing observable subscriptions. We will modify our example component to include this technique. So here make sure to import the take until from the RxJS or you can import it in this way as well. Uh, take until uh, this okay now other than the on destroy i will implement another lifecycle hook method that is on init make sure to import that as well now uh, actually let's get rid of everything here and we will implement everything from scratch so here i will define a property interval observable and is equal to interval and pass it hundred a thousand okay now i will create a subject private destroy is equal to new subject okay and let me add dollar sign at the end of this as well now i will define the ng on init function so here I will use this dot interval observable dot pipe and after pipe we will subscribe to it. Okay. And in the pipe function we will call, uh, we can call multiple operators, but in this case I will call only one operator that is take until. Okay. And I will pass it that this dot destroy subject that we just created. Okay now in the subscribe function i will pass it a callback function that will receive the value and we will display the console.log value all right now let's define the ng on destroy function and this time i will call the next function on the destroy and i will also call the complete function now let me quickly <coughs> explain these lines of code so here on the top you can see that we are importing necessary classes and operators for from rxjs including subject interval and take until and then we are creating the interval observable so here we create an observable that emits a value every second using the interval that we did before like we did before so in the on init method we subscribe to interval observable and use the pipe method to apply take until so this operator listens for signal from the destroy subject in the ng init the subscription starts when the component is about to be destroyed ng on destroy is triggered when uh, we then emit a value from destroy and complete it which uses the take until to unsubscribe automatically from interval observable so this pattern is clean and efficient way to manage your subscription by using take until you ensure that your component unsubscriptions are handled are handled automatically reducing the risk of memory leaks and enhancing overall application performance our ne next best practice is that we need to avoid multiple subscription be cautious about subscribing to the same observable multiple times if necessary use operators like share replay to share a single subscription i will show you example of the share replay as well so now let's take our exploration of the share replay operator a step further by incorporating a real world json api we will update our example component to fetch data from an online api and see how share replay can optimize such network requests so i am going to this add a property here private data observable is equal uh, i will give it a type question mark type observable any now i will add ng on init and within that i will define api url is equal to https json placeholder and we will get the list of the posts now i will use this dot data observable is equal to this dot http dot 
actually we have to inject the http client as well so i will define a private http is equal to inject and give it the http client service class make sure to import the inject function from angular core and now you can call the get method and also attach it the pipe function and now pass the share replay function to it and pass one okay now after that i will add first subscription so let's subscribe it first and it will show you the first subscription now we will subscribe it second time by using set timeout after some specific period of time okay so here i will delay for two seconds and here i will now subscribe it again uh, okay here we are simulating a second subscription a few moments later so now let's quickly test it what happens so go back to the browser we are getting the http client error that no provider is provided so make sure to import the http client module in your app module or in your standalone component import array for that i will add http client actually instead of adding it here i will simply go to the app config and here i will provide it that provide http client okay now it is available you can see that the data is being displayed here first subscription second subscription data is same but if you go to the network there would be only one network request not two okay so this is the benefit of share replay you can share the response with the multiple subscribers so i will quickly show you difference without of it so if i just remove the that share replay then you will see that there will be two network requests one this time and second would be after two seconds so if you add it back then you will see only one network request okay so setting up the http request we apply share replay with the one value to our http request observable this means that the most recent response from the api will be cached and made available to any subscribers that come after the initial request so here we first subscribe to the data observable immediately then we simulate a second subscription happening two seconds later with set timeout both subscribers receive the same data but the api is only called once thanks to share replay by using share replay in this scenario we effectively reduce the number of network requests both components or services subscribing to data observable receive the latest data but the api request is made only once this technique is incredibly useful in angular applications where multiple components or services require the same data as it optimizes network usage and ensures consistency across your application next best practice is that you should manage subscription in services if your observables are in services consider handling the subscription and unsubscription within the service itself to centralize the logic and keep components clean next one is using async pipe in templates where possible use a angular's async pipe in the templates to handle the subscriptions and unsubscriptions automatically by following these practices you will ensure that your angular applications are not only efficient but also robust and maintainable before we wrap up let's go over some advanced techniques and performance considerations for managing observables in angular these tips will help you optimize your applications and handle observables like a pro using higher order mapping operators you need to learn about operators like switch map merge map and concat map these can help in scenarios where you need to map over observables and manage multiple inner subscriptions efficiently next is custom operators sometimes built-in rxjs operators might not fit your uh, specific needs in such cases creating custom operators can provide a tailored solutions to handle observables next one is error handling strategies proper error handling in observables is crucial use operators like catch error to gracefully handle errors and maintain a robust data stream next we will talk about the performance con considerations 
फर्स्ट वन इज मेमरी मैनेजमेंट एफिशियंटली मैनेजिंग सब्सक्रिप्शन इज की टू प्रिवेंटिंग मेमरी लीक्स विच कैन सिग्निफिकेंटली इम्पैक्ट एप्लीकेशन परफॉर्मेंस नेक्स्ट इज लेजी लोडिंग ऑन डाटा Use techniques like lazy loading to fetch data only when needed. This reduces the initial load times and improves overall performance. Next one is debounce and throttle. For observables dealing with user input, consider using debounce time or throttle time to limit the number of emitted values and reducing unnecessary processing and improving responsiveness. And that brings us to the end of our tutorial on how to unsubscribe observable in Angular 17. I hope you found this session informative and useful for your Angular projects. If you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to our channel for more Angular content. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and our colleagues who might also find it helpful. Stay tuned for our next tutorial where we will talk about further useful topics. Thank you for watching and happy coding.